Hope you enjoyed your first full day of talks. It's the last talk slot of this room. Uh, I'd like to present uh, Graham Dumpleton, who generously offered to fill the slot on very short notice. Uh, he's the author of some software you may have once used called mod.wsgi, and he is currently a senior engineer at New Relic, and he's going to be speaking to us tonight about advanced methods for creating decorators. Uh, let's give him a warm welcome. Okay. Uh, before I get started, this is, this is a talk I have done before, which is why I've managed to just drop into the spot pretty quick. Um, I presented at New Zealand PyCon last year. Um, I had put it in as a proposal for this conference, but uh, it didn't get accepted. And if you followed my blog, you would have known I did a huge blog post series at the beginning of the year about this topic. Um, so it's obviously something I'm quite passionate about. And it's an interesting topic, the reaction uh, you get from it. Um, because I sort of go way beyond the normal way that people usually write decorators, uh, I sort of, well, one, I'll lose people in, the, in what I'm describing because it's sort of much more complicated than what they're expecting. And I get a lot of reactions of, why do I care about all this detail? Why do I need to know? The way I do it now works. Well, I don't quite think it does, which is part of what I'm explaining. Um, so the thing to take away from it, I guess, is if you, if you don't quite understand it, um, what I think is really good about what I'm doing in this and what I'm doing in the blog is that I'm not doing what a lot of people do when they, they talk about a topic like decorators. You'll get a lot of blog posts that say, hey, look, I went and understood decorators on the weekend. This is what they are, and I'll explain it in a few paragraphs. And they think that's all that's to it. Um, I like to go beyond that. And I, I like to create a story about how I got to that solution of what, for something, how it works. So if you, this is something like, if you ever do blog posting yourself, I really, really encourage you to do that. Don't just say, oh, I worked this out, this is a solution. Describe the journey you went on to get there, because it's really interesting to read that when people come along and do it later. And if you take anything away from that, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, please at least do that. And I hope you enjoy my story on this one. So I should mention that obviously Colton Myers did the talk this morning on decorators. So he's covered a lot of the really basic stuff here. Um, but most of what he was talking about, I've sort of that's my first three or four slides. And then I get into the harder stuff. So this is just a, a quick recap of uh, what Colton was talking about. So even if you've never written your own decorator and only have only used them, you would know that decorators from, from the at symbol used to prefix their usage. The at symbol here, though, is little more than syntactic sugar. One can do the same thing invoking the decorator function explicitly, parking, passing in the function to be decorated and replacing the original with the result. In fact, this is what you had to do before the decorator syntax was introduced in Python 2.4. The decorator syntax is therefore just a shorthand way of being able to apply a wrapper around an existing function, or otherwise modifying the existing function in place while the definition of the function is being set up. The more illustrative way of showing how a wrapper works is to implement using a class object. The class in instance is initialized with and remembers the original function object. When the now wrapped function is called, it is actually the underscore call method of the wrapper object which is invoked. This in turn would then call the original wrapped function. A pass through wrapper isn't particularly useful, so normally you would actually want to do some work either before or after the wrapped function is called. Or you may want to modify the input arguments or the result as they pass through the wrapper. Using a class to implement the wrapper for a decorator isn't actually that popular. Instead, a function closure is more often used. In this case, a nested function is used as the wrapper and is that which is returned by the decorator. When the now wrapped function is called, the nested function is actually being called. This in turn would again call, then call the original wrapped function. In this situation, the nested function doesn't actually get past the original wrapped function explicitly but it will still have access to it via the arguments given to the outer function call. This does away with the need to create a class to hold what was the wrapped function, and thus why it is 
convenient and generally more popular. Now, when we talk about functions, we expect them to specify properties which describe them, as well as document what they do. These include the underscore name and underscore doc attributes. When we use a wrapper, though, this no longer works, as we expect, as in the case of using a function closure, the details of the nested function are returned. If we use a class to implement the wrapper, as class instances do not normally have a underscore name attribute, attempting to access the name of the function will actually result in an attribute error exception. The solution here when using a function closure is to copy the attributes of interest from the wrapped function to the nested wrapper function. This will then result in the function name and the documentation strings being correct. Needing to manually copy the attributes is laborious and would need to be updated if any further special attributes were added which needed to be copied. For example, we should also copy the underscore module attribute and in Python free the underscore qual name and underscore, underscore annotations attributes were added. To aid in getting this right, the Python standard library provides the functools.rapS decorator, which does this task for you. If using a class to implement the wrapper, instead of the functools.rapS decorator, we would use the functools.update wrapper function instead. So we've managed to fix up things so that the function name and any documentation string is correct. But what if we want to query the argument specification? This also fails, and instead of returning the argument specification for the wrapped function, it returns that of the wrapper. In the case of using a function closure, this is the nested function. The decorator is therefore not what we call signature preserving. A worse situation again occurs with the class wrapper. This time we get an exception complaining that the wrapped function isn't actually a function. As a result, it isn't possible to derive an argument specification at all, even though the wrapped function is actually still callable. Now, as well as normal functions, decorators can also be applied to the methods of classes. Python even includes a couple of special decorators called class method and static method for converting normal instance methods into these special method types. Methods of classes do provide a number of potential problems, though. The first is that even if using functools.rapS or functools.update wrapper in your decorator, when the decorator is applied around class method or static method, it will fail with an exception. This is because the wrappers created by these do not have some of the attributes being copied by functools.rapS and update wrapper. As it happens, this is actually a Python 2 bug, and it's fixed in Python 3 by ignoring missing attributes. Even when we run it under Python 3, we still hit trouble, though. This is because both wrapper types assume that the wrapped function is directly callable. This need not actually be the case. A wrapped function can actually be what is called a descriptor, meaning that in order to get back a callable, the descriptor has to be bound correctly to the instance first. So although decorators using function closures or class wrappers may appear to solve the task at hand, they fail in various corner cases and also don't do a very good job at preserving the ability to do introspection. The latter is a problem for documentation tools, IDEs, and also some performance monitoring or profiling tools. So let's go back now and look at these descriptors, as they turn out to be a key mechanism in all of this. A descriptor is an object attribute with binding behavior one whose attribute access has been overridden by methods in the descriptor protocol. These methods are underscore get, underscore set, and underscore delete. If any of those methods are defined for an object, it is said to be a descriptor. What this means is that if an attribute of a class has any of these special methods defined, when the corresponding operation is performed on that attribute of a class, then those methods will be called instead of the default action. This allows an attribute to override how those operations are going to work. You may well be thinking that you've never used, made use of decorators, but the fact is that function objects are actually descriptors. I said that wrong. When a function is originally added to a class definition, it is a normal function. When you access that function using a dotted attribute path, 
you're invoking the underscore get method to bind the function to the class instance, turning it into a bound method of that object. So when calling a method of a class, it is not the underscore call method of the original function object that is called, but the underscore call method of the temporary object that is created as a result of accessing the function. The problem with class method was that it is dependent on the descriptor protocol being applied as the underscore call method only exists on the result returned by underscore get when it's called. The way to solve this is for wrappers to also be descriptors. If the wrapper is applied to a normal function, the underscore call method of the wrapper is used. If the wrapper is applied to a method of a class, the underscore get method is called which returns a new bound wrapper, and the underscore call method of that is invoked instead. This allows our wrapper to be used around descriptors as it propagates the descriptor protocol. So since using a function closure will ultimately fail if used around a decorator, which is implemented as a descriptor, the situation we therefore have is that if we want everything to work, then decorators should always use this pattern. The question now is how do we address the other issues we had? We solved naming using functools.wrapS and functools update wrapper before, but what do they do? Well, wrapS just uses update wrapper, so we just need to look at it. I'll show what is in Python 3.3, although that actually has a bug in it as well, which is fixed in Python 3.4. Key thing to try and remember as we try and look at the body of the update wrapper function is what is in these default variables that gets passed as assigned and updated. Those in assigned are what we were originally manually assigning, plus some extras. The underscore dict in updates is something new though, so we need to see what's happening with it. Looking at the body of the function, three things are being done. First off, a reference to the wrapped function is saved as underscore wrapped. This is the bug, as so it should be done last. The second is to copy those attributes such as underscore name and underscore doc. Finally, the third thing is to copy the contents of underscore dict from the wrapped function into the wrapper, which could actually result in quite a lot of objects needing to be copied. If we're using a function closure or straight class wrapper, this copying is able to be done at the point that the decorator is applied. With the wrapper being a descriptor though, it technically now also needs to be done in the bound wrapper. As the bound wrapper is created every time the wrapper is called for a function bound to a class, this is going to be too slow. We need a more performant way of handling this. The solution is what's called an object proxy. This is a special wrapper class which looks and behaves like what it wraps. It is a complicated beast in its own right, so I'm actually going to just gloss over a lot of the details of this. In short, though, it copies limited attributes from the wrapped object to itself and otherwise uses special methods, properties, and underscore get atta to fetch attributes from the wrapped object only when required. What we now do is derive our wrapper class from the object proxy. Doing so, attributes like underscore name and underscore doc when queried from the wrapper return the values for the wrapped function instead. Calls like inspect.getargsbic and inspect.getsource will also work and return what we expect. So we have a pattern now for implementing a decorator that appears to work correctly. But needing to do all that each time is more work than we really want. What we can do therefore is create a decorator to help us to create decorators. This would reduce the code we need to write for each decorator to a single function as shown. What would this decorator factory need to look like, though? As it turns out, our decorator factory is quite simple, and it isn't really much different to using a partial. Combining our new wrapper function argument from when the decorator is defined with the wrapped function when the decorator is used and passing them into our function wrapper object. The underscore call method of our function wrapper for when the wrapper is used around a normal function now just calls the decorator wrapper function with the wrapped function and arguments, leaving the calling of the wrapped function up to the decorator wrapper function. Totally losing at this point, I guess. <laughs> In the case we're binding a function, the wrapper is also passed to the bound wrapper. 
I'll let you digest that one. <laughs>The bound wrapper is more or less the same, with the Dunderscore call method delegating to the decorator wrapper function. So we can make creating decorators easier using a factory. And let's see what we had, how we solve those other problems. We we'll see. Well, let's see what other problems we can find. The first such issue in creating decorators that can work on both normal functions and instance methods of class. That's the first one we have to solve. Changing our decorator to print out the arguments passed for a normal function, we obviously just get a tuple of two arguments. Do the same for an instance method, and the result is the same. The problem here is, what if the decorator wanted to know what the actual instance of the class was? We have lost that information when the function was bound to the class, and is now associated with the wrapped function passed in, rather than the argument list. And if you've used normal function closures ever on a on a method of a class, you'll know what you usually happens is you get the self-argument passed in explicitly. So we don't have that in this case. To solve this problem, we can remember what the instance was that was passed to the underscore get method when it was called to bind the function. This can then be passed through to the bound wrapper when it is created. In the bound wrapper, the instance pointer can then be passed through to the decorator wrapper function as an extra argument. You may have missed it, but on the previous slide, just to be uniform, for the case of a normal function in that top level wrapper, we pass none for this new instance argument. So down the bottom there, we're on the right. This then allows us to be able to distinguish between a normal function call and an instance method call within the one decorator wrapper function. The reference to the instance is even passed separately, so we don't have to juggle with the arguments to move it out of the way for an instance method. Unfortunately, we aren't done, though, as when calling an instance method via the class, the passing in the instance as an argument, the instance passed to the decorator function is none. Instead, the reference to the instance gets passed through as the first argument. To deal with this variation, we can check for instance being none before calling the decorator wrapper function and pop the instance off the start of the argument list. We then use a partial to bind the instance to the wrap function ourselves and call the decorator wrapper function. We then get the same result no matter whether the instance method is called by the class or not. This fiddle does though upset things for when we have a class method, also causing the same issue for a static method. In both those cases, the instance is also passed as none. The result is that the, first, the real first argument ends up as the instance, which is obviously going to be quite wrong. We can handle that in the top level wrapper by looking at the type of the wrapped function prior to doing binding. If it is a class method or static method, then we know anything else is likely to be an instance method. For a class or static method, we use the original bound function wrapper before the fiddle was added and moves the fiddle into a version of the wrapper specifically for instance methods. We're still not quite there, though. <laughs> the argument list is right again, but the instance is still not. For a static method, this is a problem probably quite reasonable, since it isn't really much different to a normal function. For a class method, though, it would be nice for the instance to actually be, part, be, actually be the class type corresponding to the initial class argument for the class method. The big question is whether there's another way of getting this. Turns out there is a way of still getting the class, getting the class for the, oh, I'm getting mixed up here in my notes here. If I can get this one right. Turns out there is a way of still getting the class, the class method is bound to. This is by accessing the special attribute under the underscore self of the bound function. We therefore ignore the instance the underscore get method was passed and use the underscore self attribute instead. Success, finally. We now have the instance argument for an instance method being the instance of the class. For a class method, it is the class itself. And for a normal function, the instance is none. We have one more situation to consider, though. That is where we want to decorate a class. What happens then? In this case, the instance is still none. So from that, we cannot distinguish it from a normal function. 
If we also look at the wrap function, though, we will see that it is a class type, whereas it would be a, a function in the case of a normal function being called. So we luckily may have a way to distinguish. So this works out OK, because we can look at the type of what is being wrapped in this case. This means we can now have the ability to create a universal decorator. That is a decorator that can determine what it is wrapping. This does away with the need to create separate decorators for functions and instance methods, which would otherwise do the same thing. Now, the decorators so far did not allow arguments to be supplied when being applied to a function. If arguments to the decorator are required, the decorator definition can be nested within a function to create a function closure. When the outer decorator factory function is used, it returns the inner decorator function. Positional or keyword arguments could be used here, but I have a preference for using key keyword arguments as possibly a better convention. I'll explain why in a moment. So if arguments have default values, the outer decorator factory would take the wrap function as first argument with none as a default. The decorator arguments follow. Decorator arguments would now be passed as keyword arguments on the first call. Wrapped will be none, and a partial is used to return the decorator factory again. On the second call, wrapped is passed, and this time it is wrapped with the decorator function. Because we have default arguments, though, we don't actually need to pass the arguments, in which case the decorator factory is applied direct to the function being decorated. Because wrapped is not none when passed in, the decorator is wrapped around the function immediately, skipping the return of the factory a second time. Now, why I said a convention of having keyword arguments is probably a good idea is that Python 3 allows you to enforce it using the new keyword-only argument syntax. This way, you avoid the problems of someone passing in a decorator argument as the positional argument for wrapped by mistake. For consistency, keyword-only arguments can also be enforced for required arguments, even though it isn't strictly necessary. The final result is that we now have a means of creating decorators that preserves the function name, documentation strings, argument specification, and even retrieving a source code. One decorator can be used on classes, functions, instance methods, and class methods. It's also easy to support decorator arguments, even allowing them to be optional if desired. So one magic decorator. So this has been a whirlwind tour of this topic. As, I, as much as I covered, it still doesn't actually cover everything I could. And, and since this is actually slides I did last year, uh, some of the details of how I do it have changed a bit. So the blog post series I did back at the beginning of the year, if you want to know more about it, go back and read those because they have the final solution I ended up with for this. And it covers some more little caveats and corner cases, which I found that I'm not covered in here. Um, so you can go to the blog site. But you actually may, f if you go to the blog, blog post site, it's, it's Blogger. Blogger is a pain. I don't know if you've ever used it. Um, so you may find it actually easier to go to my GitHub repo for wrapped. And under there, you'll find a, um, a subdirectory called blog. And there's an index in there of, of all of the blog posts in there in order, rather than having to go through the mess of blogger. Now, I'm up to blog post 10, I think, in that series. Uh, I'm not done. <laughs> um, I, I actually want to, I still haven't even finished talking about the decorator spot. I want to I talk next about um, how the decorator module does it. Um, which it tries to use some magic to try and solve this problem too, but doesn't solve all the problems. Um, beyond that, I want to talk about object proxies. I want to then talk about the, the, the case of monkey, monkey patching and, and function wrappers and, and how generally you use them. Because decorators, in some respects, is a, a subset of monkey patching. And monkey patching is applying function wrappers. Decorator is just a, a um, sanitized version that you can use in your own code manually. Uh, so I want to talk about all that as well, and I want to talk about some other topics to do with uh, post-import hooks. So I, I, I could go another 10 posts yet. So if you're interested, keep an eye out. Now, so I should the, so if you did go to, to Colton Meyer's talk this morning, okay, decorators are easy. They're easy, as you, you can see by what he explained. Well, they're actually a bit more complicated than that. Now, rather than go and try and duplicate everything I've done, which is 
uh, could blow your mind a bit. Uh, I do have, I have done all this into a package, and it's called Wrapped. Uh, it's up on GitHub, it's up on PyPy, um, and as I say, it, it, it's, as you saw from Colton Meyer's examples this morning, if you saw that, because I actually don't have a good example in here. Uh, it simplifies the whole process. Um, if you're going to, well, take this way, if you're going to write decorators for yourself, you know, you, you fall in the 90% where uh, that using a function closure, it'll probably quite happily satisfy everything you need to do. But if you need to make it work, if you're going to provide a decorator and a library which has to be used by other people, then try and use wrapped because you'll know then that it should work and not have all these funny caveats and corner cases. So try it, see how you go. Now, we'll move into questions in a sec, but I will, one more plug. Um, so I work for New Relic. Um, the reason I know about all this stuff is because we do horrible stuff with monkey patching. Um, we take your code, which you run in production, you trust us amazingly, because I go in there and do lots and lots of nasty stuff to it. Um, this is why I worry about this stuff and make it sure it works, because if I do something wrong and use a function closure, there are lots and lots of cases where I'll break your code and you'll come screaming at us. So that's why I'm interested in all this stuff. Anyway, we've got Taste of Pie Party on tonight. Um, so if you aren't already scooting off to some of the other um, restaurant, more formal dinner things, please come along. Um, I guess there'll be a big congregation of people at some point and we'll all head down. So uh, come along and enjoy that and uh, I can talk to you later about any of this stuff. Um, but otherwise, right now, if you've got any questions. So if you have questions, you can just put up your hand. We have time for maybe one or two, and I'll just run over to you and give you the mic. So please raise your hand if you have a question for Graham. I guess two, two quick things, not necessarily quite related. Um, you still have in the current version of PAC, of, of uh, wrapped, the, um, you do is, is, is instance of class method or static method. So if somebody were to implement that, that were to effectively remove some of the arguments but didn't subclass class method, then it would still break. Um, Sorry, let me see if I understand what you're asking. If, uh, if I were to implement class method myself, yep. as opposed to using the version that's part of standard Python, would um, wrapped handle that correctly? <sighs> no. Um, it does look at the type. Is this a mic still up? Um, yeah, the, the yeah. <laughs> it's, it's stopped working. <laughs> I don't hear the huge echoes coming back like I was before, so it obviously it mustn't be working. <laughs> we might get a lot of echo now. Okay, the, que the question was, as I understand it, um, the, uh, some of the magic that I explained there, it, was, uh, it worked by looking at whether you're using class method or static method uh, decorators already. And some of the magic was dependent upon that. Uh, what that means is if the, you were to go and uh, implement class method or static method decorators yourself, correct, this is what you're asking, will wrap still work? The answer is for those things, no. The trick though, because I've tested this, is if you really needed to do that for some reason to extend class method and static method and change it slightly for some reason, you can actually derive from them. And once you do that, the is instance check for static method or class method still works, and wrap still works. The, the question is whether I see this as something that could go into the standard library. Um, it's something that has been suggested uh, at the minimum, because you know, wrapped is great. Wrapped is great to play with, and I've got lots of ideas. It's it's not just the function wrappers and the decorator factory, which I've explained. Now I've got stuff in there for function in, uh, post import hooks um, and monkey patching functions and things like that. So it goes a long way beyond that. But one of the key things in the wrapped library is this magic object proxy, which I totally didn't talk about. Uh, there there is a um, there's a weak ref proxy object 
which sort of is a object proxy, but it's not because it's a special one related to weak refs. So there's no just object proxy implementation in the standard library. So one of the things that may at least come out of this is that perhaps if once people verify that what I've done is right and not just insane, is that at least the object proxy could go into the standard library because I know it's something that Nick Coughlin uh, had the idea of pushing that we should have something like that in the standard library a number of years back and, and nothing ever happened. So I have had a bit of discussion on that. For everything else, um, yeah, getting the actual decorator factor in there would be really nice, but I feel like once I do that, I've lost a bit of control to play with it. So we'll see how we go. I think that's all we have time for, so let's give Graham a big round of applause. Thank you.